living room is so much more than just a sofa and a TV. It's a space dedicated to your personal time where you can engage with your passions and interests. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything I've chosen to create my 2022 living room setup and what tech I'm currently using to get the most enjoyment from this space. Hey pals, welcome back. I really enjoy the challenge of creating spaces that best serve my individual needs while still maintaining a modern yet comfortable aesthetic. Through lots of gradual improvements, I feel like I finally managed to create a living room environment that I would consider close to perfect. So I'm really excited to give you a tour of this setup. I've tried to include links to everything in the description, but if you have any specific questions on anything I've talked about in this video, feel free to drop them in the comments below. So kicking things off, we have the TV itself, which is the 65 inch C2 OLED from LG. I made a video a few months ago where I talked about using the 42 inch version of the C2 in my desk setup. And I know a lot of people have been asking for an update, so here it is. This is probably one of the best TVs that you can buy right now. It's pretty much excellent in every single way, but it's not a good experience when using it as a monitor. The automatic brightness limiter and poor white uniformity were far too distracting for me. And to be honest, I just missed the simplicity of a single cable connection via USB-C. So I returned the 42 inch, and for the time being, I'm back to using the LG Ergo monitor. That being said, I can't stress enough how great the viewing experience is for typical use. The color reproduction and contrast are better than anything I've personally experienced. And this OLED TV is perfect for a home cinema setup. Movies look incredible on the C2, and whether you're watching a vibrant animated film or a more stylized gritty drama, it's such a pleasure to watch content on this screen. The C2 is also an excellent choice for console gaming, allowing you to achieve 120 frames per second at 4K resolution and achieves better peak brightness than previous LG OLEDs for convincing HDR gameplay. It really does allow you to get the most out of the PS5 and genuinely makes you feel like you're playing a next-gen console. I've also been really impressed with how well this TV performs in everyday use. It's incredibly snappy when switching between apps or navigating through menus, and so far I haven't had anything crash or not work how it's supposed to. That being said, there are a few things that I think could be better. The reflections on this screen can be annoying, and unfortunately the layout of my living room windows makes this unavoidable unless I close the blinds. The improved brightness of LG's Evo technology means this isn't usually a problem when content is on the screen, but in darker scenes or scrolling through black menus, I can often see myself reflected on the glass. I also wish I had a bit more control over the menus themselves. Often the content that is recommended to me isn't relevant or feels a bit too much like an ad, so I wish I had options for different views for when I only want to see the essentials. There's also this weird pop-up menu, which only appears after turning on the TV. I don't mind the menu itself, as having an app switcher would be useful, but as far as I can tell, there's no way of bringing it back into view, and you're forced to use the full screen menu instead. Overall, I'm really happy with this TV, and it makes an excellent centerpiece to the room. 65 inches is a good size for my current setup, but I definitely have room to go bigger in future. Underneath the TV, I have this floating media unit from Ikea. This is part of the Besta range, which I highly recommend because it has lots of customizable options, allowing you to design a unit that matches your space and requirements at a very affordable price. At 180 centimeters wide, it's pretty massive. However, you can actually wall mount it quite easily as long as you have the right screw fittings. This not only gives me a place to sort all my things, but also allows me to hide all the cables in my setup, helping to maintain the clean and minimal look. To achieve this, I drilled two large holes into the plasterboard, one behind the TV itself and another behind the media unit. I then fed an extension lead with all the HDMI cables through, giving the illusion that there are no wires coming out of the TV itself. Even with my very basic DIY skills, this is pretty easy and I think it massively improves the look of the space. On top of the media unit, I'm using a Sonos Beam as my soundbar of choice. Its minimal design and small footprint works really well in the space and I think it sounds great for its size. A good picture is only half the cinema experience, and it's really important to use a decent speaker setup to get the most out of your content. The audio from this soundbar has a lot more depth and character than the speakers built into the TV. I would definitely appreciate a bit more from the low end, but for this price, you'd struggle to find a more complete package. And you have the option to add additional speakers, a subwoofer, further down the line if you wanted to create a surround sound setup. This is the first generation of Sonos Beam and has a canvas cover protecting the speakers. I love how premium this looks, but I've noticed that over time, dust has settled in between the holes of the grill underneath. It's only noticeable up close, but I understand the updated version of the Beam has a perforated design similar to the much more expensive Sonos Arc. So if you're looking at getting the white version, I definitely recommend keeping this in mind. On the right-hand side of the TV, I've installed this slat wall with a walnut finish to match the rest of the room. 
Just like the panels in my home office, I also got this from Naturewall, and the MDF strips are mounted to the same thick black felt which is acoustically dampening. As this room is carpeted, treating the audio wasn't really a concern, but it's nice to know that I'm helping to reduce any unwanted echo. The main reason why I installed this is because the setup just looked a bit sterile on its own. So I wanted to bring in some natural textures to help make it feel a bit cosier and to hide the power cables going into the media unit. I keep my PS5 on the floor next to the slat wall corner to keep it out of the way and to ensure that it maintains good airflow. Now this PlayStation obviously looks a bit different than usual, and that's because I've replaced the side panels with a set of dark plates from Dbrand. They're super easy to install, you literally just pop off the panels by hand, and I much prefer the curved design over the pot collar look of the original PS5. They sell them in a few colours, but I chose this light grey because it reminds me of the original PlayStation 1, and I really love the retro vibe. When I'm not working, I spend a lot of time playing video games, so I definitely approach this setup with gaming in mind. That being said, I didn't want my living room to have the classic gamer look, so I've tried to keep everything as clean and minimal as possible. Behind the TV, I've mounted these LED strip lights from Govi. I've used Philips Hue lighting in all my other rooms, but I heard really good things about Govi, so I was keen to give them a go. I went for the Dreamview T1, as it's a cheaper alternative to the Philips Hue Play Gradient, which syncs your lights to the content on screen and can help improve the overall immersion. My experience with the Dreamview has been far from dreamy, however. They're pretty slow to connect, and the app is way less polished than other options. For example, the colours don't really match what you select, so it's basically trial and error until you get what you actually wanted. The worst thing about them though, is how inconsistent the LEDs themselves are. This is as close to daylight temperature as I was able to achieve, and you can clearly see how one corner has a much more purple tint, with the other edging closer to green. The dream view comes included with this aerial, which attaches to the top of the TV, and has a small camera which allows the lights to sync with your content. It works pretty well under certain conditions, but for some reason the lights at the bottom of the screen occasionally turn red instead of dimming for darker scenes like they should. I've tried using the calibration tool to correct this, but it didn't really work, so I definitely wouldn't recommend these, and I'll be looking for a better option soon. On the opposite side of the room, I have my seating area, which is comprised of a corner sofa and a large coffee table. The sofa is from DFS, however, they no longer sell it, unfortunately. This is such a shame, because it's really comfy, and when I bought it, you could configure it with lots of different colour options and layout orientations. It's great for relaxing into, and the neutral colour means I can change out the cushions to create the look that I'm after. It's big enough for three people to sit comfortably, but when I have guests over, I usually pull out this leather bench to create a more social layout around the coffee table. Speaking of which, the coffee table is from made.com, and it was actually the first piece of furniture I ever bought for my apartment. It's really large and has a middle section with two hidden drawers which I use to store TV remotes and other tech accessories. The Walnut MDF is really good quality and has this rich warm tone which I really like. Having a middle section to quickly tuck books or devices onto is really convenient and the smoked glass top section feels really premium, although I have accidentally scratched it a few times by not being careful with placemats. In the corner I have this floor lamp which is also from made.com. It's probably the one piece of furniture I get the most compliments on, but it is such a pain in the ass to live with. Without fail, I hit my head on it every time I get off the sofa. That aside, it's lovely, and I've used a smart plug to enable me to control it with voice commands. In addition to the lights, I can also control my blinds using voice commands. These backup blinds are from Ikea, and you can set a custom length, so they can pretty much work with any size window. They're also battery operated, which means you don't need to hire an electrician to install them. I usually get about six months of battery life before I have to charge them, which is really good considering I'm using them multiple times every single day. Finally, I've added a few plants to break up all the straight lines created by the furniture, and to help bring the room together. So if you made it this far, I'm assuming you enjoyed the video. So if you want to see more of my content in future, then please consider subscribing. I really enjoyed making this tour of my living room space, and I'm looking forward to finding ways to continue improving it in future. I also regularly post updates on my Instagram, so feel free to follow me there if you want. You can find a link in the description below, along with product links to everything I've talked about in this video. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next time.